I say good morning once again. We're welcome to another Sunday school class, and we're grateful, thankful for being able to come back again and to be able to share with you guys. We're going to be in the book of Ezra, Ezra again, the six chapters. So if you would go ahead, get your Bibles out. I want to thank Pastor Speech, Sister Speech, for joining us once again. And uh, I want to thank uh, Brother Marcus, our superintendent, uh, and Sister Brother Hatcher here. So it is absolutely thank him and praying for him also. Also, I say, Sister Minister uh, Marcus, thank God for you and Evangelist Sullivan and the whole Sunday School Department. Mm -hmm. Just say praise God for each and every one of you. All right, so we're going to be in the book of Ezra. The sixth chapter. Uh, I'm gonna read a little bit here, and then we're gonna dive into the lesson. Uh, our theme is liberating Passover, and that's been our theme for the last couple of weeks here. Um, we're gonna look at the sixth chapter of Ezra. I'm gonna look at that 13th verse. I'm gonna read a couple of verses, and then we'll dive into the lesson. Then Tacna, governor, on this side the river, Shadabona, and their companions, according to that which Darius the king had sent. So they did speedily, and the elders of the Jews built, and they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai and the prophet Zechariah, the son of Edu. And they built and finished it, talking about the temple, according to the commandment of God, of Israel, and according to the commandment of Cyrus, Darius, and Artaxerxes, king of Persia. Uh, and this house was finished on the third day of the month, Adar, which is the sixth year of the reign of Darius the king. We'll stop right there. And we'll, we'll be highlighting some more verses as we get into the lesson. Uh, again, the theme is liberating Passover. And our subject for the day is celebrating Passover liberation. Uh, we've already talked about freedom uh, from captivity. And I was in uh, the first chapter of Ezra. And we know how important it is for us to be free from any kind of bondage. Mm -hmm. you know, God desires for his people to be free. That's why he came, that we may be free. And also we talked about the freedom to worship. And that's in the sixth chapter, the first 13 verses. Uh, we talked a little bit about worship and how important it is for us to worship with a sincere heart. And we talk about worship. We're talking about giving God our best. Uh, when we say worship is glorifying God, I mean, he gets all the glory. It's not about us. And we want our worship to be pure. And we want our worship to be satisfied to God. Uh, worship is sacrifice, sacrificial. Uh, and also, worship is being free, being joyfully free. And as we look at the lesson again, I want to kind of do some backtracking also uh, to kind of bring us up a little bit to where we are today. Our goal is to trust God's faithfulness because he is committed to his word and he's committed to his promises. I believe that's very critical because a lot of times as we go through you know, our little situation, circumstances, whatever it may be, it's important for us to trust God's faithfulness. I mean, his word is so critical, especially these times that we live in today. Uh, we see so much going on around us. And the church, of course, if we're not careful, we allow the world to distract us. And we can lose focus on what God has called us to do. Mm -hmm. But all we have to do is trust his faithfulness, yeah. trust his word, commit to him. And of course, you guys know now, God is looking for a commitment. He's not looking mm -hmm. for, you know, those uh, sidewinder Christians <laughs> of today and get down tomorrow. No, no, he's looking for people who's going to be committed to him, especially these days that we're living in to now. So guys, again, we thank God uh, for, for his word. Uh, as we look at the lesson again, uh, we see that God is stirring the hearts of these pagan kings. And the, the 
the scripture talks about these pagan kings, they was not really uh, committed to God. They were like political, uh, military uh, kings. But we see how God works through uh, mm -hmm. Darius and uh, uh, Artertes and um, the other king to bring about his purpose and his will. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, I think I thought about that a couple of times. How would God work through uh, an unbeliever, somebody that's not even serving him? Mm -hmm. You know, somebody's not even committed to him. But God's ways passes our ways. Mm -hmm. And that sometimes God does things that we don't even know about. I didn't even think Pharaoh uh, had a part in God's will. Mm -hmm. And if we think about some of our rulers today, I know many of you guys watch the news, uh, you're looking about what's going on in foreign countries and mm -hmm. stuff like that. As I told you last week and the week before, in the book of Proverbs uh, 21, 1, the, a king, he's in, he's, he's like a, he's in the hand of God. Mm -hmm. He's like a stream of water. Mm -hmm. He's like a stream of water in the hand of God. A king. You can put a ruler there. You can put a president there. That's what they are. It's just like a stream of water in the hand of God. And God can turn that person wherever he will. And nothing catches God of God. That's the good news. And that's hope for us because we serve a God that has what all power. Yeah. And he knows all things. And that's why, you know, it behooves us to put our confidence and faith in God. Nobody knows what's going to happen tomorrow. But I do know what's going to happen today. If God, if I, my faith is in God and I'm committed to his word, I don't have to worry about anything. I can go to sleep at night and so can you. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to encourage you guys also, again, don't worry about what you're going through, mm -hmm. circumstances, situations. Don't even worry about that. Again, as I look, as we look at the lesson, God working through these particular uh, pagan kings, he puts Cyrus hard. He, he puts in Cyrus hard a desire to build the temple in Jerusalem for his people. Uh, we cannot always know how God will work. We should never make that mistake of assuming uh, he will only work one way. Now, the Bible tells us God has many ways to work. The scripture also tells us in uh, Hebrews, the 13th chapter, uh, that God, he's the same yesterday and today and forever. Now, he's the same, but what he does is not the same. See, he may want to work different in my life than he might want to work in Sister Crawford's life. So, all I'm saying is we have to be careful not to put God in a box. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Because he works in so many different ways. You think you got God figured out right here. He may be moving right here in so many ways. Sometimes God's ways can be predictable, but that sometimes he surprises us. He moves in a supernatural way. Mm -hmm. That's why it's very important that we uh, trust the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, also, we look at some of the background uh, part of the scripture. As I said before, this first chapter, a decree had gone out forth from King Cyrus for the children of Israel to return to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple because they had been in what uh, captivity for what 70 years. So he had a decree out. And of course, somewhere between that first chapter and that fourth chapter, uh, uh, King Cyrus, he had died. Mm -hmm. And uh, Darius was on the throne now. So again, uh, God used these uh, particular pagan kings to complete <coughs> this particular work and also to dedicate the temple. And I noticed this also, he chose the, uh, Cyrus to start the sign. Mm -hmm. But you notice that uh, Cyrus didn't complete the sign. Mm -hmm. And that goes the same way for us also because God may use Sister uh, Martha's or Sister Crawford to start the project. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean they're going to finish mm -hmm. the project. Mm -hmm. Because he may want you to do a certain thing. Mm -hmm. And he have maybe three or four more people coming to do something else. And I said that just to say this. We have to be very careful that we think we can control God mm -hmm. or tell him what to do mm -hmm. when it comes to positions and mm -hmm. titles. Mm 
No, no, no. We're just what instruments that he called. Mm -hmm. You didn't call God. Yeah. He called you. Yes, sir. And he called you for a purpose yes, and for a reason. So therefore, we had to be very careful not to allow our emotions, uh, feelings to get involved when it comes to faith. Because this is the way God operates. He don't operate by your feelings. He sees your feelings. He's a faith God. Mm -hmm. He means exactly what he says, and he says what he means. It is up to you and me to line up and to get in line with that scripture. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. So again, the assignment, <clears throat> it was not complete under Cyrus' uh, reign. And of course, during Cyrus' reign, I read also, there was a lot of opposition during Cyrus' reign. Just like it is opposition today. Any minister that's doing any kind of work for God, it's going to be opposition. Mm -hmm. It's going to be opposition on the outside. It's going to be opposition on the inside. Mm -hmm. But the key is, uh, with this opposition, it didn't catch God off God. Because mm -hmm. he said, they that will live godly will suffer what? Persecution. Mm -hmm. And they that is born of a woman is of a few days. Mm -hmm. Well, you might as well get used to trouble because trouble <laughs> is your constant <laughs> companion. And if it wasn't for trouble, you wouldn't be where you are today. Amen. Yes, well, you say, well, I don't like trouble. Well, nobody likes trouble. Nobody likes pain. But trouble has a purpose. Mm -hmm. And it has a reason mm -hmm. for coming in our life. Mm -hmm. Trouble is not the problem. Mm -hmm. It's your attitude mm -hmm. toward the trouble. When mm -hmm. it shows up or when it comes, in so many words. How am I going to handle this particular financial problem? How am I going to take this? It's your attitude. It's the way we look at the problem. It's the way we see the problem. If I start grumbling and complaining, I just open the door for Satan. Mm -hmm. And you've got your ministering angels also ministering on your behalf. Look what you're doing. You're shutting them down. Mm -hmm. They can't move. So again, it's my attitude toward opposition, mm -hmm. uh, the persecution that I face every day. And the good news is that God has graced us so much that he's already take, taken care of every one of us. Mm -hmm. And I just said that just to say this. We're dealing now with the finished work of Jesus Christ. If mm -hmm. I say what the word of God say about Calvin, do what the word of God say about Calvin. Mm -hmm. And this is a process. Mm -hmm. I ain't going to get this overnight. Mm -hmm. But that just goes to show you how important it is for you and myself to stay focused on what God has given to us instead of worrying about who likes us or who don't likes us mm -hmm. or this, what this person doing, what this person's not doing. No, no, no. We, we've got to pray for them and keep it moving in so many words. Mm -hmm. So again, uh, we see it again that Cyrus didn't complete the assignment, but God had these other particular uh, rulers mm -hmm. that was in place to uh, also uh, complete the assignment. And of course, the work did stop. The Bible said that uh, the work stopped for like 16 years. And God had to use two prophets, Haggai and Zacharias, to encourage the people. Mm -hmm. And that's a good thing, too. Anytime we get down, or anytime we get frustrated, or anytime we feel like just throwing our hands up and saying, well, what am I going to do? God has that ram in the bush. Amen. And all we have to do is trust him because he knows in this journey, this Christian journey, mm -hmm. uh, in the flesh, yeah, it's going to be hard. But when we trust God, things work a lot smoother. Mm -hmm. That's why the scripture tells us all things work together. Mm -hmm. Good to them that love God. Mm -hmm. To them that are called according to his purpose. Mm -hmm. So again, we see that uh, despite all the opposition that Cyrus had, and despite uh, this decree that Cyrus uh, had introduced in the first chapter, he had gotten his place. Darius came on the scene, and of course, some of the opposition, one of the persons was uh, Tagni, you also had leaders, you also had the Samaritans, all these folks were against the work. They were against the temple being built. Mm -hmm. And don't think people are happy with the work that you're doing, mm -hmm. especially for God's uh, kingdom. Mm -hmm. People want to look for ways to stop you or discourage you from mm -hmm. doing the work of God. But rest assured, brothers and sisters, it's not your work. Mm -hmm. It's God's work. Mm -hmm. And if God called you, mm -hmm. he's the one that's going to fulfill it and complete it. Mm -hmm. All we have to do is be that vessel or that instrument yes. that he will use 
for his purpose and his glory. Mm -hmm. And actually, that's encouraging for me because whatever, I don't get too caught up on titles. You can call me whatever you want to call me. As long as I know that I'm a child of God. Mm -hmm. But the key again is don't get so caught up on the titles and all that stuff. That stuff is it's not important to God. Mm -hmm. or if, if I'm a servant and I have a servant's heart, mm -hmm. then that's more important than any title that you can put yeah. on yourself. Mm -hmm. Again, we're looking at uh, Governor uh, um, Tagni. Uh, he has also had sent letters to Darius wanted to try to stop the work or to investigate this particular building process. And once uh, uh, once Darius uh, searched the archives and they found the decree that Cyrus had made in the first chapter wanting the Jews to return back to Jerusalem and build the temple. Once that uh, decree was discovered, the Bible said it was discovered in the city of Archmedia Ar in the providence of Media. And when Darius read that decree, he allowed the, build, the rebuilding to, to continue. Mm -hmm. And he also issued a decree that if anybody, if anybody interfered with his word that he decreed out, death would be your sentence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He even went and said that he would take a timber out your house and nail you to it. Mm -hmm. now, I don't know how important the king were back in that day, but if the king spoke something, if he decreed something, mm -hmm. it was just like the law. Mm -hmm. Whatever God said, that's exactly what God means. Mm -hmm. So again, uh, we see that, uh, and this is the favor of God that I like right here. Not only did uh, uh, Darius make the decree, but uh, Darius also told Governor Tacni and his officials to all, to help with the finance. Mm -hmm. He had the government to take care of all the finances <coughs> that these Persians would need to build this temple mm -hmm. and any animals because that was like a, a commodity back in that, that those days. Animals they used animals to get work done also, mm -hmm. and they needed if whatever animals that they needed, they were also there also, and this was at the government expense here. And as we get into the lesson a little bit here, let me get into the lesson right here. Uh, we, it talks about the, the people finishing uh, and rejoicing. And this is like in the 13th uh, verse. It says the people was finally, the, the temple was finally complete. Uh, God's people had been through so much as we talked about, a lot of obstacles, but the finished product is now visible and they rejoice. You ever had, been praying for something and waiting for mm -hmm. God to uh, manifest, and just like you do it right right now. Some of you guys have prayed for something. You believe in trusting God for something, mm -hmm. and but the manifestation is not here. Mm -hmm. All you have is God's word, mm -hmm. and you're just in so many words, just taking Him as His word. Mm -hmm. You don't know how He's going to work it out. Mm -hmm. You know when He's going to work it out, but you know He's going to do it. Mm -hmm. And that's the good news here in this particular uh, mm -hmm. thing here. Now this temple is visible. Uh, they've labored, they've been building for years and years, and now God has manifested the temple, almost like this Ephesus here. In so many words, you know, we prayed, we thank God for it, and now we're able to visualize this temple. And they dedicated it to God. And we talked a couple of weeks ago about in the book of uh, the book of First Corinthians that our temple, this body. Mm -hmm. Is a temple also of God, and this temple also has to be what rededicated mm -hmm. to God on a continuous basis. Mm -hmm. So again, uh, and also the Bible tells us that this temple also has been bought with a price. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay, uh, as we look also at this particular temple that's been dedicated to God, we give all the glory to God, even though God worked through these particular uh, pagan instruments here. But we give all the glory to God. The Bible said the temple was complete, not by human powers. You know, sometimes we got to be very careful about taking uh, those little accolades, those little pats on the back from people. When we do something for the kingdom of God, people will pat you on the back. But you need to give that glory back to God. Because if it wasn't for God, we wouldn't be able to do anything. Amen? Mm -hmm. So again, uh, it's not by human power, but it was by God's power. Mm -hmm. It was God that was the one that stirred the hearts of 
of these particular leaders to complete this work or this assignment. And uh, it was God that guided their hands. It was God that used their enemies. Mm. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. When we do what is right in the sight of God, he can even make our enemies to be at peace with us. Mm -hmm. When we do what is right in the sight of God, you don't have to worry about it because sometimes God will use your enemies to help you mm -hmm. stay focused. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, and sometimes he'll put them right beside you. <laughs> but the enemy is not the problem. They're not the problem. Yeah, the enemy is sometimes Satan will work through them to kind of to try to distract you. But the enemy is not the problem. The Bible tells us what? Love. Why did he tell us to love your enemies? Pray for those that persecute us and say all manner of evil against us. We gotta love those folks. Because that's what Jesus did. And as we talked about several weeks ago, and I think our sister Crawford may have said this, we got to love people. If you don't love people, you, you, you're going to be miserable. Because that's what Jesus' ministry was all about. And, and mm -hmm. I'm not talking about love people with your feelings. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. You can't love people with your feelings and emotions. you got to love people by faith. Mm -hmm. And you got to love them with the attitude that God has towards you. And one mm -hmm. thing I like about God's word also he has graced us, or oh, he has given us an allowance. Mm -hmm. You know, back in the day, mom and dad used to give us an allowance. Mm -hmm. God has given us an allowance to forgive people mm -hmm. who trespass against us mm -hmm. or say all manner of evil against us. Mm -hmm. The same amount of forgiveness that God showed towards you, he wants us to use that toward others. Mm -hmm. And, and when you can forgive people, especially when you know close people that you know that, that you help, mm -hmm. that you've done things for, and you went out your way to sacrifice, when you can still bless those people, you're growing, mm -hmm. you're growing. Mm -hmm. But if you do evil for evil, nothing happens. Mm -hmm. But that's when you're growing, when you can love your enemies mm -hmm. and pray for those. Mm -hmm. And it's not always easy. Especially people that grew up, that you grew up with, your brothers and sisters in Christ. And I'm not saying we can do it in the flesh because nobody can do it in the flesh. That's why it's important that we walk and pray in the spirit. Because that's the only way you're going to be able to love people. There are a lot of things that I don't like. But sometimes I have to turn my eyes and just say, okay, this is what, this is what's going on, Holy Spirit. This is not me. This is up to you. This is up to you to fix this. Mm -hmm. And he will do it in his time. Not, he's not going to fix it because I said, but he's going to do it in his time. Because mm -hmm. I have to realize uh, the ministry is not about me. And it's not about you. It's about what God wants to do through this ministry. Mm -hmm. So again, we have to make sure again, stay focused. Because, I, you know, things will get worse before they get better. Huh? Mm -hmm. And things will get worse before they get better. And the sister was telling us a couple of weeks ago, your faith mm -hmm. is on the testing ground. Yeah. Every day. Mm -hmm. That love is a love, is a love test, it's a faith test. And it's why it's important that you know we stay focused and close to that word. Mm -hmm. right, okay, let me move on. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, 16 and 18 verse. It says that the people of Israel they offer sacrifices. He said the people didn't just, just didn't sing and shout. Of course, now keep in mind, now this temple has been what? Dedicate to God. Mm -hmm. So you got a lot of what? Celebration. People are so excited. They are happy what God has done. Mm -hmm. But it said that these people just didn't sing and shout and dance. They brought an offering. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They brought the best offering. Well, you know, back in that day, you know, they didn't have offerings like we have. But when you say, well, I don't have money to give. We're not talking about money. We're talking about giving your best to God. Mm -hmm. That's what God's looking for, your best sacrifice. That's what he's looking for. And of course, mm -hmm. he looks at the heart and the motive of why we do whatever we do anyway. So again, God is looking for our best, just like he was looking for their best. And these uh, particular Jews here, they offer God a sacrifice. Of course, they gave what? Praises, worship, uh, during this dedication of the temple. Uh, back in this time also, it talked a little bit about some of the sacrificial uh, offerings, like the sin offering. 
And of course, that sin offering, burnt offering, but in this particular context here, it's talking about the sin offering. And of course, people will have to do what? Kill a lamb, bull, uh, on behalf of, of the people, because that lamb, that blood, would be able to represent their forgiveness in so many words. And only the priests will be able to stand on behalf. Mm -hmm. And we thank God for our spiritual priest today that intercedes for us on our behalf. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, as we look, as we get further into the lesson, uh, I want to look at this particular passage also. It says the feast was celebrated. Uh, and this is like toward the 19th and the 20th verse. It says these uh, three captivities here, uh, it says that these uh, three captivities had just been delivered from the house of exile. Uh, the Passover, the celebrate, the celebrated by the Hebrew people. Uh, this, what this meant is it was a pattern of divine intervention in the life of God's people. And it said it was on the 14th, 14th day of the month, according to the Jewish calendar, mm -hmm. that and everyone was ceremonial clean. Uh, the Levites, they slaughtered a Passover lamb, just like they did back in uh, the book of Exodus, mm -hmm. when the uh, children, uh, when God was, uh, that last ju judgment, that, that last judgment that God gave mm -hmm. to Moses and given Pharaoh, the firstborn, the children would die. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, God kept his word. Who was protected? The Jewish uh, firstborn kids. Mm -hmm. And the only reason why they was protected because they followed what? The instructions of God. Mm -hmm. And the same way today, you know, Jesus said, my people perish for what? Lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And not only do they lack knowledge, but they reject knowledge. Mm -hmm. If we're not following God's instructions mm -hmm. concerning his word, mm -hmm. we can't expect God to move mm -hmm. because he's a God of order. We just can't just throw stuff to God and say, here, Lord. No, mm -hmm. we have to follow his instructions. Just like these uh, Israelites had to follow the instructions. They had to kill, find an unblemished lamb, mm -hmm. kill the kill it, take the blood, and put it on the doorpost of, doorpost of their home. Mm -hmm. And when that deaf angel passed by, he would pass over the children. I mean, can you imagine uh, the, this, this deaf angel uh, killed the firstborn? of the uh, Egyptian sons. And he passed over the uh, Israelites' firstborn son. And both of them was in the same city. They were in Egypt. Well, what was the children of Israel? They was in Goshen. Mm -hmm. While all these plagues were going on, the, ch the, the children of Israel were in Goshen. While all this was going on. They didn't see not any of that, those plagues. That's God's mercy and that's yeah. God's grace. Yeah. He would do the same yeah. thing for us today when we follow his instruction. It don't matter what go, go, goes on around us or what comes our way. God will cover us just like he did with these children mm -hmm. with his blood. And I thank God for his blood today. Yes. And I plead that blood constantly over my life. Mm -hmm. Because as I go out, as I come in, it's only the blood of Jesus mm -hmm. that keeps us. Mm -hmm. Again, we're going to stop right here, but I uh, thank God for, uh, for the lesson again and uh, God for your prayers. Uh, thank God for uh, these words of encouragement. Uh, I know there's a lot that I didn't cover, but please go back and read uh, the, uh, Ezra, the sixth chapter. Mm -hmm. And please, by all means, you can always send your questions in. Because sometimes we do real good when we can just answer those questions ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Versus us trying to explain and get everything out to you. It's mm -hmm. kind of hard to get it out to you like that. If you set a question, we can zero in on that particular question. God bless you. Be encouraged. And uh, we pray that God will continue to uh, 